when every day is great when you wake up early. 6 a.m. I wake up at 6 a.m. You can wake up at 5, you can wake up at 4. But waking up at 6 a.m., man, it's a vibe. You get up. Most of the world's still sleeping. You get up. You open your book, open your laptop, go to the, the field, go to the gym, do whatever you need to do. And it's like you got a head start on the whole world. A head start on the whole world. And that's what that three hours, the first three hours of the day is all about that GSD time, that getting shit, getting stuff done. That's why I feel good today. That's why I feel like I'm ready to do lockdown episode three. This is it. The three X's. Everybody right now, what's up? Dara Collins, footy addicts here. Great. Great to see you guys. Um, Nick Seltz, Galaxy Grips. I know you guys just followed me too and got a message. I was like, who is Galaxy Grips? Svevi, Svevi says he loves these videos. Uh, shout out to everybody on, uh, on, on YouTube, uh, Instagram Live. Uh, guys, guys. Today, in lockdown, episode three, this is the third time I'm doing lockdown. We have a very special guest. His name is uh, Paddy Galloway. Um, he's joining up now. He's just getting, he just has a few technical issues, but he's, he's got, getting up now. I really wanted to bring this dude on the, the show uh, because, if, do you call this a show? What do we call this? A show? I don't know what we call this, a hustle, hustle movement. With the three X's, uh, I really wanted to bring him in just to like kind of talk talk about some stuff and growing a movement. Um, and he doesn't speak like a an internet marketer would, right? Like I hate hate that. Sean says, "Yo, yo, you hyped? I'm hyped. I am hyped. We've been grinding since the early morning hours every day. Not just today, but Tuesday, Monday, guys. On Friday, I got up at six. Didn't go to bed until midnight. And that whole time, I literally was just boom, 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 going, 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 going. And at midnight, I still have that energy to, to keep going because I love what I do. I love what I do. Train Effective is something that I love. Talking to you guys is something that I love. I try to create a, a life for myself where I am hyped for every moment. I am hyped for every situation we put ourselves into because that heart is there. And when you're following your heart, everything comes naturally so that's what i'm saying to tasha that's what i'm saying to viral videos on on youtube right now that's a interesting name um official chris says yes let's call it the hustle show we can we can call it the hustle show not just a show we'll call it the hustle show but um but yeah this is my mood right now i'm feeling hyped lockdowns always got me feeling hyped the weather is sunny but we're here in lockdown so that's what we're doing right now um before Paddy comes and speaks his truths, I wanna I wanna talk to you guys, especially on on Instagram Live. Um, what I could do is answer one or two questions, um, and just get just get you know Sean just keeps saying he's so hyped. Sean, I appreciate that, but uh, for everyone listening right now, let's let's give it give it some uh, thought on what we could do right now. Let's go. Let's go. Uh, X Dara Collins asks, "How do you stay motivated during hard times? Um, do you call Do you call COVID nineteen hard times? Yes, you can call it hard times in that you might be in the house more. Um, hopefully, hopefully, fingers crossed, you don't have any family that's affected around you. Um, but for the most part, I think for the most part, most people are, are kind of unaffected with with family situations and." friends and and things of that sort. So I always I always look at like like what can you actually control? What can you control? You know, what can you control in your life? You can't control coronavirus affecting you necessarily. I mean, unless you're stupid and you like, I don't know, go meet a bunch of friends and like pass it on and you know what you know what I'm saying. But for the most part, coronavirus is going to take its toll. It's going to do its thing. You can only focus on the things that you can control. So how do I stay motivated? Focus on the things I can control. Um, I know that I can I can focus how many hours I put in on my craft, how many hours I can spend on my goal and things like that. And if you just focus on that, 
the rest will come easy. You can't control the outside forces of what will happen. Stick to what you can control. That's what I'll say to you, DX, uh, D Dara Collins. What else? Let's go to the next one. Uh, book recommendations. Yes, I have uh, three at the top of my head. One is The Magic of Thinking Big. This is a classic, something I preach all the time. The Magic of Thinking Big. Get it on Amazon right now. Um, what else? Rich Dad, Poor Dad for that financial literacy. I think it's something that I read when I was a teenager and like that still stuck to me to, to today. Um, the Alchemist. Love The Alchemist. Those are three things, three books I can, I can uh, think of at the moment. What are your goals with Effective in the next year? Oh my God, Jacob. Jacob asked that question. What are my goals with Effective in the, in the next 12 months? Um, number one, we're focusing on releasing a new version of Effective. Shh, it's top secret, so don't tell anyone yet. Um, but um, we're focusing on, on a, a lot more new features. And so you can really go into Train Effective and really feel like you're aspiring to be one of the top on Train Effective. And I'm going to explain a lot more of that as these weeks and months go on. But um, number one, better, better product, better app. Number two, oh my God, Jacob, I'm so glad you asked this question. We have, do, 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 do. we have a new series coming out on, from Sunday on the Train Effective channel. Uh, it's a new challenge. Sorry, on Monday is going to be the new challenge, which is going to be released. On Sunday is going to be a documentary. This documentary is something we've been working really, really hard on. So if you go to the Train Effective YouTube channel, make sure, Jacob, to turn on the notifications uh, so you can get notified about Sunday's video. And then Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, we're going to have a video every single day on Train Effective. And that's why I'm so hyped because that's consistent season. We've got some things going on right now. I love it. Let's take one more question because I see Patty on the screen. <laughs> Patty, I gotta, I gotta. If you, if you, if you can hear me, I'm gonna add you in a in a second. But um, but all good, man. Uh, Danny says, sorry, Zane says, how can you work on running, fitness, and quarantine interval training, three, four times a week? That's what I do, pretty much every week. So that's number one, and yeah, just follow that, man. That's like, I'm not going to say anything else. Go with that. Do interval running. Uh, use an app like RunKeeper. It, uh, it has a series on RunKeeper by ASICS called For the Long Run. And there are some great workouts you can do on there, which are interval-based. Control the controllables, Fevi. Yes. Uh, Hassan, shout out to Hassan. I'm so hyped, bro. I can't get my can't wait to get my grind on. Yes, me either. I'm in the grind. Hello, Zana has joined. This is amazing. Lucas and Andrea has joined. I love it. Okay. We're going to get Mr. Paddy Galloway on the, on the show, on lockdown. Um, for everybody on uh, on Instagram Live, I'm just going to say this. I'm going to type this out. Go to YouTube, link in bio, because uh, you're not going to be able to hear Paddy. So go to YouTube. Uh, let me pin this comment, and then let's get Paddy on. Paddy Galloway, can you hear me? Hello. Yes. I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes. What's Perfect. That? The video. What's the video is a bit laggy, but it's, it seems. Yeah, yeah. It's for everyone who uh, doesn't have any context, um, Paddy is in an island right now. I think in the middle of nowhere, where he's got a one megabyte something internet connection, which is pretty slow, right? It's not ideal. It's not ideal. Okay, so there might be a little bit of lag or whatever, but you know that's cool. We make it work. No excuses. But no, no problem, man. Um, I've just been talking to to the guys here about uh, uh, some things about the grind. I love talking about the grind here on, on Train Effective, and uh, on on my ch on this new thing here with lockdown. Um, um, Patty, what's your grind, man? And like, what's uh, what, what's a bit about your story? Well, I suppose YouTube is my grind. That's my platform. Yeah. That's where I've always been. Um, I think I must have started on YouTube when I was about 12 years old. And over the last 10, 11 years, I've just constantly been creating channels, you know, different niches, different subjects. Basically, whatever I was interested in, I made a channel on. So, like, I went through a stage of being into calisthenics, 
body weight exercises, made a channel on that. Went through a stage of being into like EDM music, made a channel on that. Um, yeah, so over the years, I just kept building these channels and eventually I started actually being able to build an audience behind it. So it wasn't just a hobby. I was able to actually build a business behind it. Um, and yeah, my first probably really successful channel was an Irish hip hop channel. As you can tell by the accent, everyone listening, I am Irish. <laughs> and um, that blew up big time in like 2015, 2016. It uh, has about 110K subscribers on YouTube now. And yeah, since then, I've just been building channels and trying to figure out YouTube myself. And now I try to show other people how to do it as well. Damn, man. So so you did EDM, hip, a lot of things around music, it sounds like. Yeah. Well, I think like yeah. as I was saying, I kind of, I definitely followed my my hobbies. So at the time, I was really into hip hop uh, when I started the Irish hip hop channel. And then, of course, I was into EDM when I started the EDM channel. So I just think whatever I was into at the time, I just wanted the way of connecting with a wider group of people that were all also into the same thing. So I was really into me, the, the, both those genres of music and it kind of made sense to try build a community around it. Irish hip hop. I've like, I don't yeah. know any Irish hip hop. I better link you up. Artists. Yeah, please link, link me up. Um, but actually for everyone listening, like what's, what are some Irish hip hop artists? Like what's, what's popping right well, now? Well, there's a guy, Lowry Crack. Yeah. Really hard to spell. A L A W or I I I space C or A I C. You, you better look him up, everyone listening, because he's he's really good. It's kind of like a mix of like American hip hop with grime. You know, grime from the UK, like London yeah, grime. Yeah. Um, and it's really cool. Like the they use we use our own accents, like our own Irish accents and everything, and it's really authentic. And yes, yeah, it's, it's starting to really pick up momentum. Like we've had some guys like getting labels, getting record contracts, and yeah, hitting big millions of views and everything. So, can you rap, Patty? No, definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> not one bit. Okay. Yeah, I've been uh, recently listening to uh, on Spotify like the UK rap and UK drill playlists. Because um, obviously, like I, I live in London, right? Not right now. I'm not in London right now because of, of lockdown. But uh, I've been listening to a lot of drill and um, and and just rap in general. But um, yeah, I, I've yeah. seen the names in the UK scene, but I, I don't know any Irish ones. So this is cool. Yeah, it's kind of like it's following the same sort of trajectory as the UK. So like in the UK, I think at the start, everyone tried to kind of copy what they were doing in the United States. Mm. And like it wasn't really authentic. They were kind of even rapping in accents and everything. And then eventually, like the likes of Wiley came along and people like that and Skepta, JME, and they started using their own accents. They started like really channeling their own you know, what they see around them rather than trying to like copy someone else. Yeah. And the same sort of things happened in Ireland where we started out and everyone was trying to copy the UK and copy the US. And now we're kind of doing our own thing where like people are using their authentic accents, using Irish slang, you know, and it's, it sounds much better. Wow. It's really good. hundred yeah. percent. I know so many people, moment. I know so many people would try to copy the accent of uh, Conor McGregor and say things he says. Um, and uh, can you hear me, Patty? Yeah. Okay, yeah. And uh, yep. what else was you thinking? And like, uh, and like Drake, Drake, um, was it Drake? It was Drake who released, was it a song like a year or two ago? And it was really influenced by, I think he, he really is influenced right now by like the UK scene and stuff. Yeah, definitely. He's yeah. his More Life album, I think that was two years ago. He had like yeah. gigs, Skepta, um, Georgia Smith. He had loads of UK sort of grime hip hop artists on there. And yeah. He's a yeah. kind of people call him culture vulture, but at the same time, like he uses his his audience to like reach out to new scenes. So I think he definitely did help the UK scene. Hopefully, and make a song with the Irish artist next. I, f I feel like he he's only got positive vibes to share. That's why I'm such a big fan of Drake. So yeah, I think on one hand, a lot of people can criti almost be critical and say like, oh, you're copying this flow or like copying this guy, but he's putting his own spin on it, as you say, and exactly. He's a positive dude, you know. I mean, come on. Anyway, um, but but Patty, I think um, just one thing to touch upon: like a lot of people have passions and projects that they're pursuing that are are going to be listening to this. Um, did you ever have any like fear or angst of of starting something on YouTube as you did and like it failing or succeeding? Like, did you ever have like a? Oh, I don't know if I'll do that because you know it might fail. That's interesting because I think when I first started, I didn't at all. Like I, 
when I first started, I was 12 years old and I was just, you know, whatever I felt like posting, I didn't really care if it got views. I didn't care if people didn't like it, you know, I just posted like videos of my brother, things like that, you know, very random, generic kind of kid stuff to put on YouTube. I put up a few gaming videos, that sort of thing. And at the time, I definitely didn't care at all. But then I think over time, I started to like pay more attention to numbers. And like, you know, when I actually saw that you can make a living on YouTube, I got kind of obsessed with like, I need to be able to build an audience around this. And it kind of, it almost took it away from like the reason I actually started. I was too into like the kind of the metrics. Is this video performing as well as this one, that one, you know? Um, you seem really kind of, technical. Yeah, definitely. That's, that's the approach I think of YouTube, 100%. Like I think. Yeah. Yeah, I have a bit of a background in digital marketing myself. So like I worked in a social media agency for a year and everything there is like, what's the conversion rate? What's the ROI? What's, you know, and I kind of, I like to look at YouTube through the same lens and be like, you know, we can boil it down to numbers, but you can definitely go too far. And I think I went a bit too far maybe a year or two ago where I actually stopped posting much content at all because I was like, if this doesn't get views, I don't want to post it. If this, you know, and now I'm kind of at a space where I'm like, you know, I want to, to make content I enjoy that also gets views. Well, like that's the kind of goal I think. So was that was there stuff that you're working on that like you just stopped enjoying or like felt like it was just to get views or or attention? Yeah, like for example, like so this Irish Ship Off channel, IRM TV, if anyone wants to look it up. Um when I first started it, I, I loved it and I loved like being in connection with all the artists. I loved like, you know, because it was kind of it was a mutual relationship. They gave me content, I gave them a platform to to reach more people. So it was like, you know, it was if if kind of feel good experience, it was growing fast. Like, I don't know, it's just it was just I really enjoyed doing it. But then after a few years, I was like, you know, I still like our ship up, but it's not really my interest anymore. Like I was kind of moving into other things. I was even music wise, I was getting into different kinds of music and stuff. And I was kind of like, I'm just doing this for the sake of it, just to kind of keep the posting going. So I actually stopped posting on that channel. And I haven't posted on that channel for I think a year and a half now. So I think it's a it's an example that the reason I did that was I could have like kept it going and making money and stuff like that. But if I'm not actually enjoying what I'm posting, yeah. I just don't want to post. And that's the same with every, every creator that actually lasts on YouTube. Cause if they're not, you know, if they're not enjoying it, they don't want to post. That's the key to longevity. You think? Cause we, we just had this 17 uh, year old yeah. yesterday. His name is Connor Harrington and he'd been posting. He's really inspiring guy, like has type one diabetes and he'd been posting okay. stuff just about type one diabetes. And like, he has a really, a lot of people following him, like tens of thousands of people following him. Um, people were really engaged in like what he's sharing about diabetes. But um, just recently, he didn't feel like that was a thing for him anymore. He wanted to talk about other stuff. So he like changed yeah. his name because it was type type one diabetes teenager. I think that was his username. And then he changed it to his real name and like started switching stuff up. But because of doing that, he's like lost followers. He's lost uh, lost a bit of that like, like people commenting on his stuff and things like that. So like, you think this is just like a natural, natural progression in like how you evolve? Yeah. Like yeah. I think, especially just for this guy as an example, like he's not going to, when he's 25, he's not going to be making videos about having type two diabetes as a teenager. Is he like, is he's not going to be a teenager anymore for one, you know, oh. people evolve. I think, I think like, you do have to make content around what you're interested in at the time. And there's a fine line, like, you know, it's same, like the channel I have at the moment, it's doing really well financially. It's, you know, it's, it's my, it's how I make a living right now. So I can't just turn around one day and say, actually, I want to make a different channel altogether. So it is the fine line of trying to, to make sure you're enjoying it, but also, you know, that's, it's paying off and that it's, it's staying to grow. But I do think like I can even see with my channel at the moment, like at the moment I'm, analyzing big youtubers and eventually i will evolve into kind of more of my own stuff and like hopefully one day i'll be the big youtuber that i can share my own experiences and stuff like that so i think everyone kind of has that in mind that like a track for evolution you can't just make the same content over evolution. years you know you got you got to have the vision of, of of how like you got to have that vision of what you're going to be in a in a few years with however i don't think time time is irrelevant it's just more like what is that vision you have of yourself and what where do you think you're going to stand out or be that be that person like what are you known for um exactly and um that this is this is something i love talking about like like what what do you see like what's your own vision of, of yourself like in you know yeah like 10 years like what's what's patty look like 
Well, I think there's this YouTuber. He's actually from London. He's called Ali, and he's a he's a doctor in Cambridge. And he said something really good where he was like, "I've stopped planning out five years ahead because I want to leave myself flexible enough to change." And I think I kind of follow that where I'm like, I'm doing the right things. I think that will build up a, a name for myself, build up my skill level, but I don't want to limit limit myself of where I could be in five years. So like a long-term goal, it's, it's really hard to say. Like, I, I think at the moment I'm just focusing on being the guy to go to for YouTube advice. Like that's what I want to, to build the channel around. I want to, like I've seen other people do it and stuff. And I just want to be the guy both, like outside of YouTube and on YouTube. So outside of YouTube for businesses and stuff too, who want to like build a better YouTube channel, want to lead gen off YouTube. I want to be the guy to go to. Um, and then for actual YouTubers who want advice, want to be able to grow, maybe need training or mentoring further down the line. I want to be the guy there. But I think long-term, I just see myself being in some sort of e-commerce business, some sort of thing like that, creating something. Okay. Um, yeah, like it's hard to, hard to tell, I think. This is wow. Okay, so Patty's a real business G. <laughs> this is G. This Try is to be. Okay, got it. YouTube guy, business business G, or will be, or try to be. Yeah, got it. Yeah, um, wanna be. <laughs> and uh, okay, great. So okay, as a YouTube guy, as a YouTube guy, um, there's there's a lot of people watching right now that are that are listening that have small like YouTube channels. They might have. They might not even started or they got a hundred subscribers or 50 or like me trying to grow this new channel that I have now at 1,710. Um, so I, I wanted to get really quick into um, some, maybe some tips or tricks that you have for someone who's just starting out to then how they could get, let's say their first hundred thousand subscribers in a, I'm not going to say 30, 30 day period or six month period. Cause I think that's too short. But maybe yeah. more like in a 12, 24, 36 month. So, so, some, some number at least they could say that to think to themselves, like, oh, okay, I have influence in this subject that I'm talking about. Yeah, exactly. That's, a, that's actually an interesting point because mm. the way, you, the way you, most people grow on YouTube anyway, obviously there's the crazy examples of people that blew up overnight and stuff. But the way most people go is like kind of slow at the start, very slow, very slow, then a little bit of pickup and then pickup and then just like that and it's kind of what happened to me so like i've on the channel i have at the moment which i think we've just hit 103k on that um for ages i was growing at about 2k a month which is great like that's how long i've been growing for for ages for like literally two years i was growing by you know one to two k a month and then in december i grew by 40k so that was right. my kind of bang moment of just going flying up and since then i've still been consistently getting kind of between five and 10k new subscribers a month so I think that's really important before you even start on YouTube to realize how long it takes to kind of build up the momentum. But I think you can definitely, like it's definitely possible to get 100K in under a year or in 24 months. Mm. I've seen countless people do it, but um, yeah, it's, it's a long, it is a long game. But as for like tips and tricks for people starting out that, and of yourself as well, I think there's a few things. Um, one thing I always say is, are you trying to do, are you doing something different? Are you trying to do what other people are doing? And that's something I keep reminding myself of. Like whenever I, think of, oh, I want to change my content to do this because I saw that guy doing it. Then I kind of bring myself back and say, the reason my content does well is because not very many people do the same thing as me. So when I first started, I was watching, have you ever seen the nerd writer on YouTube? He's a, he does like video essays. Yeah. yeah, he does video essays of um, movies and like acting and like sort of all sort of arts and stuff. So he has like, he has like a video on like why David Cameron is a brilliant director or why uh, Fleetwood Mac were such a good band. He does those sort of things. And I, I was watching those videos. I was like, I really like these videos. And at first with my current channel, I was just going to make videos like that. So I was going to take like directors, actors, musicians, whatever, and just analyze how they, you know, how they, why they're so special, why they're so good. Why Kanye West is a genius. Why, you know, that sort of thing. But then I realized that that's not unique. Like it's just, it's just looking at what someone else is doing and then just copying the thing. So what I did was I kind of, I looked at how he made his videos and how he structured them and how he talked and stuff and said, what if I was to like switch this on his head and actually apply this to other YouTubers? And that's kind of where the idea came from. And at the time, pretty, I don't want to say no one else was doing it because I might, might miss someone else that was doing it, but no one else was really doing those like in-depth analysis videos on YouTubers. Like since then, a lot of people have done it. 
and um, not to say that I've influenced them or anything but yeah. but when I first started I was the only one that doing it so like everything I did at the start just did really well like my first my first two actual YouTube analysis videos got uh like one has got like a million views now and the other one's on like 700k or something or 600k so it was clear that like from the start I was making content that was different than not already on YouTube it's a lot easier said than done but I think a good way of doing that is just seeing what's successful and seeing how you can like adapt it to yourself mm. so for me obviously I saw that these video essays were really successful and I decided that I was going to you know adapt them and apply them to a different area so like I think I think that's a really important consideration and then like in the same sort of vein are you making content that other people want to see it's as simple as that sometimes like are you making content that's bringing value to someone else or are you just making content for yourself and your friends and it's definitely a midpoint between content that you want to make yourself and then content that other people want to see you need to find that sweet point in between where you can have content that you know everyone wants to see but you would also enjoy making and so they're like really surface level and um, but then after that i think on a more technical side get to know like youtube analytics get to know why videos perform why videos don't perform so youtube look at like hundreds of different data points when they choose whether to promote a new video or not but like the main ones at the moment are ctr click-through rate so how many people are clicking on your videos out of 100 people that have been shown it and um, how long are they watching for so obviously from those two things you need to make longer videos and you need to make sure your thumbnails and titles are really clickable that's subjective well, you should look around and see what other people are doing in this space see how people are like capturing the attention of of people who are just randomly browsing through youtube and um, so really getting to know your analytics and getting to you know just get that drilled into your head that you need to make videos that make people click and stay and um, so there there are some really important surface level things and um, but i think i could talk all day about different there's so many different little things people can do and try and it's it's definitely case, case basis but the number one message i think would be to to uh try to do something different Try and make sure your content is, is not just content you want to make, but it's also content that other people want to see. Sounds really obvious, but a lot of people forget that. Mm. And just pay attention to your analytics, understand what videos do well on YouTube. That's Got probably it. what I'd say to most channels anyway, starting out. I'm trying to I'm trying to break this down in a in a way, because we also have like a lot of young young listeners who probably are still confused of the word what analytics means. <laughs> okay. Even starting there. But, <laughs> but I, I'm I'm trying to break down what you say so like number number one is is do something where you're passionate about like you have a genuine interest in that um don't yeah. just don't just do don't just copy what someone else is doing just for the sake of it do something you're actually passionate and have a genuine interest about that's number one um num number two is when you start pu putting your content out there uh is to is to use titles and thumbnails that grab attention um yeah and, and for those who don't know what thumbnails mean, they're the uh, the pictures that accompany the title of the video. They're the pictures of the video pictures. Um, I guess those are two key steps. Like, what would you say are like three and four or five? Well, after that point, it's it's a it's a case of consistency. So over time, you need to like everyone's different on YouTube, and it's kind of hard for someone like to me me to give like cookie cutter advice that everyone can apply. So really, like some people say you should make 50 videos and stuff. I don't, 50 shit videos basically before you actually, you know, join the channel. But I, I do think that that's kind of a bit backwards. Like if you're making 50 videos and they're all doing terribly, you should look at yourself and try to reflect and see what you could be doing better. Um, but it's definitely a case of just trying different things over time, like working with different subject titles for your videos. So like if you were making like videos in this niche, maybe try experiment with something else if that niche isn't working for you or try title things a bit differently, try, you know, try different things like that. And it's real, real like kind of experimentation. That's a really key part of any YouTube journey is trying to figure out what people want to see and how you can like make your content in a way that captures attention. It's yeah. as much about kind of understanding human psychology as it is anything that don't want to sound too um, important or too, uh, make it too complicated, but just try and understand like what, what do people want to see? They're scrolling on the phone. What's going to stand out to them? What's going to make them say, "I want to watch that video now instead of this video"? You're competing with everyone else's time on a on a scroll feed. I know people watch a lot of YouTube, but whenever they watch my video, it's because they saw other videos, but they decided this is the one they're going to click. Yeah. So just trying to get into that mindset um, and experimenting with your content. That's you know that's what I really say next. Uh, and after that, you can get more advanced. You can think of things like you know 
Is there any collaborations I can be doing? Um, are my tags and description of my video, which is the, the writing you have underneath your video, and then the tags, which are basically keywords that you have underneath the, the description, are they optimized to, to get um, traffic from search? Um, so really, like, there's, there's loads of things you can try, and I think it's hard to break it down into just like a few minutes, but yeah, I think everyone needs to just kind of put more attention into into the kind of back end of it rather than just focusing on uh, these are my videos. Why aren't they getting views? Like I put these out, put ages into them, but they're not getting views. It's really it's important to be introspective and say why why is that the case? Like why what, what, what am I not making say, videos for this audience? You, like like that or whatever. Sorry, Patty. Like what what would you say is like not getting views? Is it like twelve views? Or 120 views, or like a thousand views. Like, what, what? What do you no. define as not getting views? That'll be. That's really interesting. I think it's it's all relevant to your to your to your audience size, of course. Like, like if Mr. Beast puts up a video and it gets a million views, that's bad for him. But if I put up a video and it gets a million views, that's the best day ever. Like, you know, that's yeah, yeah. brilliant. You know, it's, it's obviously relevant to your audience size. But what I mean when I say good or bad views, I mean based on your average. So in your YouTube studio, you'll of course know. Um, your new videos, it ranks them out of 10. So when you upload a new video, it'll say, this video is ranking number three out of your last 10 uploads for uh, views or for watch time or for retention, stuff like that. So that's what I mean by comparing. So if your video is obviously ranking high, as in it's the second or first best video of your, out of your last 10, then it's a good video. So it's all, it's all relevant to what you're actually getting at the time. Like I think small YouTubers, like, like when I was starting out my first channel, is like, if I was getting 10 views a video, then one video got 500 views. That's like, I should just zone in on that and say, why did this go so well? Why did, why did this pick up when others didn't? So I think it's like, it's obviously, um, all related to how much you usually get. Yeah. Your average. I got, I got it. Well, like I'm, I'm really trying to, I mean, this is, this is a bit more personal, but I'm really, I'm really trying to, um, I, I've been really focusing now on putting more stuff out in this Nick Humphrey channel. Um, People know me best from Train Effective, uh, which which now I think we're at around seventy thousand subscribers on on YouTube. Um, haven't, haven't been posting really consistently or anything, but uh, it's like what you said. It's like I started it five six years ago and it kind of was going very slowly. I was just posting about stuff I was really passionate about and wanted to share, and then um, I had this moment where I, where where I started this hundred day challenge. And in that 100-day challenge, I documented the journey of like trying to become a professional player in 100 days. And every that's how I found day... you. Oh, really? Yeah, I saw I saw those videos come from my. Okay. They were about about 2017, was it? Yeah, 2017. Yeah. Um, that's and that's great. that's how that's, that's how a lot of people know me, and like it's still crazy. People still approach me in the street, and they're like, "Oh, so your 100-day challenge?" I'm like, "That was three years ago." But um, but uh. I really love doing that because one, it was something I was passionate about, something where I believe you need to consistent show consistency because getting better in something you really need to be con be consistent. Um, and like on on YouTube, it did like really well. On social media, it did really really well. And for now, since that's been over for the last what two and a half years now, it's been over. I've been trying to find that kind of let's say that formula again to really get something that people will grasp on again. Um, yeah. And I was just recently thinking like, well, maybe I should just do 100 day challenges for like any goal that I have in, in life. Like I have a lot of different interests. Football is a big one. But um, on Train Effective, we're also building like a real like startup company. Maybe I should do a 100 day yeah. challenge about 100 day challenge to become the number one sports app on the app store or like 100 day challenge to like, get a get a get a hundred thousand downloads or I, I don't know what it is but i was just thinking about doing that again i'm like you know maybe that's a great way to uh to show to show people what's happening because that's what i love doing yeah. and yeah also is it like a business company focused thing i don't know just thinking no, out i think loud, i think the reason i think the reason your um 100 day football challenge did so well is because it's kind of First of all, it's something that a lot of people relate to because, you know, like I, I wanted to be a professional footballer when I was um, about 13. I think I gave up the dream when I was about 14, but I always, yeah. I always wanted to be a professional footballer. I wanted to play for Man United. That was my dream. But, um, you know, so like when, when I saw that, I was like, you know, I didn't, 
fulfill that dream and i know i'm not going to fulfill that dream but i'd love to you know i'd love to just follow someone else that's doing it or just even just improving in football like i i, lo- I just kind of felt like that was it was almost like competing in a piece of me that i never experienced i just wanted to see how it was going yeah. and it, definitely the same could be said about business like like right now there's a lot of people that you know they want to be entrepreneurs and they want to see that journey and yes there are a lot of people that do document the journeys but like you know there's not a lot of people our age doing it you know like our mm. kind of young entrepreneurs type people so yeah i think that could be a cool idea yeah that's what i was thinking it was like putting trying to exactly what you said like like someone can be in your shoes while you're going through all the shit <laughs> yeah. the ups and downs and everything um yeah, you're, you're exactly right. Yeah. A lot of people want to be like entrepreneurs, but don't really see like what happens when it's, you know, late at night and something has gone wrong. Um, um, maybe that's something to focus on. Okay. Hmm. Cool. Um, any other tips on what I, what, what do you think I should do? Yeah, well, I, I actually should, I should probably fix the channel. I, I can get up in front of me here, actually. Hmm. I think. Uh, okay. Yeah, my, my... live on air. <laughs> live on air. This is this is what I wanted to do. I don't want to. I don't want to make it real scripted or anything. But um, yeah, like I just I just literally just started uh, posting posting again from the start of this year, and but I've only maybe uploaded 15, twelve times. But I think. That's why the hundred day challenge works so well. Is like I uploaded every single day, and I, like I had to up, upload every day because the hundred day challenge. So, like, pe- people would tell me, um, Nick, like I watched hundred day challenge every morning before I went to school, like with my breakfast, and like, you know. So I'm like, yeah, that's the kind of habit like people need to form around watching your stuff. Um, yeah. I think I'm experimenting with like what I could talk about, what I can really talk about, what it, what people are really interested in, but also what I'm passionate about. So I'm not well, just... well, I can see now from your mm. channel here is um, like your the content. Oh crap! You're cutting. You're cutting out, Patty. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, go go ahead. Try try again. You were like. Can you hear me? Uh, yeah. Hello? Yeah, I think so. I think so. Sorry about that. Bloody Irish Wi-Fi. <laughs> it's all good. I can hear you now. Okay. I think uh, I think that might might have happened when I went to, to scroll down on your YouTube video because this internet can only handle one tab at a time. <laughs> don't, I, don't even ask me how I've managed to build a fucking YouTube channel in this, in this house, this Wi-Fi. God. Um, <laughs> Yeah, just just from flicking through your channel like it looks it looks like your content is solid like obviously i haven't clicked on a video yet but the actual thumbnails titles and the topics look solid mm. so, like really the views you're getting like you, you've got one point how many how many subscribers you have 1.7 mm. yep yeah like the, view, the views you're getting are pretty solid for that's a better um view rate than me per so, like, like 100 views. views on a video is all right if you have 1700 subscribers yeah like that's that means like 10 percent eight percent seven percent of watching a video like that's more than pewdiepie for example like he's yeah. he's got a hundred and <laughs> subscribers and it, it is it's true it's more than pewdiepie per um per subscriber got it. i think just keep doing it and try definitely try work on some sort of challenge or something like that 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 would definitely be cool any way where you can share more of your own journey and kind of yeah. have a theme that people expect so people on my channel expect youtube breakdowns so if i start posting if i just randomly posted tomorrow a video about you know just me talking about myself or you know maybe doing even like a different kind of business video or something it obviously wouldn't do well because people aren't expecting it people aren't there for it so if you can build some sort of like momentum youtube is so like momentum is so important on youtube so if you can build momentum over time where people know what to expect people know what they're getting even like it's nice if they know what time they're getting it how many times a week and stuff like that you can build the momentum over time. It's kind of why your hundred day football challenge works so well. Mm. Um, I think I think you're on the right path, man. I'd keep keep hustling it out and seeing how it goes and experimenting. And if you if you've already got that mindset of like I'm not just going to post for the sake of it. I'm gonna I'm gonna like really try to understand what does well and what doesn't. 
then you're going to win in the long term, even if it takes a bit of a while to get your traction up and going. Yeah. Thanks for that. I appreciate it. Yeah. It's just, um, just, yeah, just really, I, like, I really want to stick to something and post every day for like a long period. And it just makes sense to me to do a hundred day challenge about something. Um, but, um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm really interested to see if I, if I do do something like a hundred day challenge to number one app, let's say, if that's going to be as popular, we're going to have that same engagement as like football because football is just, yeah, so many people want to be professional footballers and do do uh, the same amount of people or is there really a group out there that want to put themselves in their, their shoes of like, you know, something with an app or something with like training, something we're building with train effective. I don't know, but you'd be, you'd be surprised. Like, I, I think people when I talk to 15 year olds, 16 year olds that I know, hmm. I think as many of them want to be entrepreneurs now than they did then. You know, when I, when I was 15, everyone wanted to be a footballer. Mm. Now, people want to be entrepreneurs. People want to build businesses. People want to be influencers and stuff, even though that's not really in the same category. But it's still someone that might be interested in the kind of business side of things. So I think I think the world is changing. I think you know, I think more people are getting interested in that, especially young people. So I don't see I don't see why you couldn't build a big audience doing that. Got it. Cool. That's awesome. Well, I'm not going to bore the audience that's going to be listening to this on uh, too much about me, but um but that, that's a confidence boost i'm gonna i'm gonna think about what you said now and if I, if i if something goes well i've got to credit patty so no problem that's what i'm uh, here from <laughs> i love it um well look man i don't know um, i want a slice of the revenue like, <laughs> can you be my manager please can you like that, that's the thing it takes a lot of time to actually make the videos um, and like manage everything and like edit like that's something people really don't see so it's really hard to do that on top of uh building something like i'm building with train effective where there's like yeah. six seven eight people working on it and it's really full time full time all the way so balancing that and on a really tight budget it's just it's hard but yeah i can, I can imagine yeah. yeah um but uh but yeah man um well i think i think in a way i've kind of Maybe, maybe. Hello. Go on, go on, go on. Sorry, it's just a bit, a bit of lag. Um, I think like at the moment I'm, um, in final year of college, so I'm just finishing out my final exams and everything at the moment, and I'm, I'm managing to balance it. But my my approach, as you'll see from my channel, is I definitely focus on, like, one or two videos a month. But each video I put out has a huge amount of thought behind it, and like. You know, I'm, I'm deliberately targeting certain keywords. I'm like, I spend ages researching, animating, doing everything. So that's that's kind of a way you might be able to do it. So like maybe if instead of it's a daily thing, or even if it's just a weekly thing, or like three times a month or two or three times a month, if each video is really high quality and stuff, and really you put a lot of focus into it, it sometimes can pay off better than just uploading every single day. Like, like a I think almost, yeah. In one of my recent videos, I said that if you look at Mr. Beast. He put up a tweet earlier this year and he was like, um, we've already spent uh, 200K and days of filming on three videos this year that we just scrapped. So he he made these videos and he spent loads of money on them, loads of time, and then he just scrapped them. He didn't upload them because he wasn't fully happy with them. And I think like if he just wanted to you know, get views quickly, he'd just upload them. I think anyone else would upload them. I'm sure they were probably really good videos, but that's kind of a lesson that I've taken from myself. And I'm like, I see other channels like the nerd writer, which I mentioned earlier, and um, like in a nutshell, I don't know if any of, if you've ever seen that before in a nutshell, it's this animated series, Polymatter. These are all channels that make one or two videos a month and every video they upload just does really well. They get like, they all have over a million subscribers. And I think like, it's not always about trying to pump out as much content as possible. And um, sometimes it's about toning it back and focusing all your efforts into a few videos so like if you combined daily vlogs and put them all into one video and put a lot of effort into it you're saving the problem of like having to work every single day on it and you're also like making a high quality video with better watch time and stuff like that so you're saying like do more like a weekly update or like a like a yeah especially weekly. especially if you are time strapped mm. i've actually i don't know i need to i've actually got a connection in youtube who works on the algorithm 
um, who works with the the YouTube engineers and stuff and implement like whenever something's new implemented, he always like posts about it and stuff. So I need to actually ask him if I ever talk to him again about how um you know how much it um, is affected by how often you post because I've actually seen a direct correlation between posting less and getting more views. So when I leave a video for if I upload a video and then I don't upload it again for like three weeks, the video does better than if I upload again the next week. And I, I'm trying to figure out why that is. I have a few theories of why it is, but it's definitely interesting. It's definitely kind of goes against that kind of feeling that you should upload every single day, you know? So if that isn't feasible for you, I'd definitely recommend trying it less. But don't you think on the counter argument side, because some people say like, oh, you got to upload every day, every day, every day. That's how people are going to make it a habit in your life to watch you and stuff. Like also when you make more videos a day, you can use different titles and thumbnails and ways to capture an audience or a topic, right? Like, because that's one way you could go. And it feels like if you have more volume around different subjects, then you'll just get more attention on whatever you, you're doing. Yeah. Or, hmm. And I'm like, well, it is, it's definitely dependent. Sorry. Well, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. So I think it lagged again there. It's definitely, it definitely varies channel to channel. Like I don't want to, I definitely don't want to say that's going to work for everyone. Like, because there's people with a lot more subscribers than me that bang out videos every day. Of course, I just think, so I think both ways can work, but I do think that sometimes people overlook how powerful it can be to just, focus your efforts into a few pieces of content because at the end of the day, if you've got a week to make a video, it's going to be much better quality than something if you had a day to make it. And I know you can target more people. You can try different keywords, different tags, stuff like that. You can experiment more, which is true. But if you're making, you know, one video, it's more likely to actually stand out. Like if I pumped out shorter breakdown videos on YouTubers, like two or three times a week, first of all, I'd run out of YouTubers to actually make them on, but also, <laughs> still the message and I'd kind of make it really um, diluted and like it would just be too it would turn into something that's not how I want the videos to be my videos are in depth. I want them to be I want to put thought into every single one of them and I want to make sure people realize that so it definitely doesn't work for everyone but I just think I really part of what I want to do on YouTube is to break down the idea that you have to post every day because I know someone like Gary Vee and um, he preached about posting every day and I think that's really important on Instagram Facebook, Snapchat, things like that. But he he even saw with his own channel when he was posting daily, he's get he was getting less views than when he started to post kind of every two or three days, which he started doing at the end of last year. So he kind of realized himself that you know people don't want to be absolutely bombarded. They want to they want to really like get the right get get a really strong product every time they click on your video. And it's different because Casey and I that two years ago, three years ago everyday posting, you know, that's what he did. He was the kind of one of the found the founders of like daily vlogging. But that worked then and I don't think it works now as well. It still works really? but not. So you think the game is the game has changed with that? Definitely. And it's it's like it's to do with a lot of factors. One of it is that there's so many new people on YouTube that to stand out, you don't want to just be the person that posts the most. You want to be the person that posts the best quality. But also like the actual algorithm changes over time as well. Like different things are like I'm actually making a video on Logan Paul at the moment. It's really interesting yeah. because he's someone that I personally have never really liked as a YouTuber. Not as a person. I don't don't know him, obviously. But as, as a creator, I've never actually really liked his content. So, like, everyone I've made videos on, I've kind of, I have watched their videos before. And, I like, I like, like I do know them. I, like, I, I followed them. For example, like, Casey and I sent Peter McKinnon and I, big fans of both of those. But this guy, Logan, I just, he's just not my kind of person. He's too high energy. He breaks shit all the time. He's... He's a bit cringy. He's a bit of a douchebag, and also, I think we all remember that video he made in 2017, and um, that went very controversial. But um, while I'm making the video, I'm kind of like noting how in 2017, when he was making videos, he was making really long videos. They were like every day, consistently every day, and they were like yeah. really like stretched out. They had really bright colors and all the thumbnails, loads of like text in the thumbnails. And if you compare it to what he's making now, it's completely different. So YouTube make moves really quickly. And if you just try to look at content that did well in 2017, I think this is relevant to you because of your, like your um, own 100 day challenge thing. If you look yeah. at content that did well in 2017, it's not necessarily going to do well in 2020. Like it changes so quickly, the, the way people consume content, but also the way YouTube promotes content changes so quickly.
You're right. Now I've got to rethink. We, we have a 21 day, 21 day challenge we're doing uh, on the Train Effective channel starting on next Monday. And the idea was we're going to post it every day because it's like day one, day two, day three. Yeah. But maybe I'll, I'll have to talk to the team and we, we post every two days or something. Well, just, just work it out. It's definitely case by case basis. Like, you know, I don't want to, like, I'm never, never in the position to say this is what works. Mm -hmm. Well, I just, I definitely think people can get too kind of caught up in that idea that you have to bang out content every single day. Mm -hmm. And I just think that leads to, like, if, I think at one stage I wanted to, like, post content on my channel every single week while I'm in college, while I have a job, you know? And at the time I was, I was going to try to do that, but I just realized that if I did that, I was going to cut corners with the content out there, which I think you should never do. I think the content should come first. And that's why I don't really stick to a schedule for content. And when it's uploaded, I upload it when I'm happy with it, rather than setting an exact time and uploading it. And I know that goes against a lot of what people say, but I just think, you know, the actual quality of the content has to trump every everything else rather than, you know, how often you're doing it, how often you're uploading, what time and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. I think it's important to know. Quality over quantity, yeah. Got it. Hmm. I've got some things to think about. Yeah, I'm for me too, I'm all about like quality. I, I don't wanna I don't wanna release something which is half half ass and not thought about and not gonna help someone. So this is this is like yeah, yeah, something that's gonna ponder on my mind for a while. Hmm. Nice. You're welcome. <laughs> nice, buddy. Um, well, man, listen, we've like uh, time. Time has flown by. I think it um, has. Jesus, it's um, um, just uh, I think a really good discussion in general because a lot of people, uh, I think a lot of people will find this video, this podcast from from people that follow you and want to know more about you. Uh, I imagine they'll listen to this, so I think it's they probably also have or thinking about the same issues we just talked about. Um, yeah. I think it's really good to have actual examples here on the table. Like I've talked to you about my like real struggles here as a someone creating stuff and trying to build their movement. And then you got your real life examples and like references you can point to. So I think it's really like I think that this would be really valuable to many people in general. I hope yeah, so. For sure. Um anything else, man, you want to talk about or I have to ask you this. Uh, uh, what position did you play when you played football? Uh, I still I still play football, but more just training, training because it's train effective. That's my thing. Um, yeah. What position? Uh, usually, I would play as a as a right right winger. That would be my specialty. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Or right. I played as a centre back. Centre back. Okay. Yeah. Hard man. Are you tall? Yeah. Big big centre. Um, six foot one. Six oh foot six. Oh my one. god. Okay. Okay. There we go. Yeah. Ah, so that's where Rio, Rio Ferdinand's and Man United inspiration for you. Yeah, him and Vidic, big, big fans. But obviously yeah. Roy Keane, Irish, he's, he's, <laughs> the, he's my favourite. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, no, Vidic and Rio were probably, what, the best defensive partnership ever ever in Premier League history? One of the best. Yeah, I, I'd say either Rio and Vidic or Terry and Carvalho they mm. were in the early 2000s. And then uh, Arsenal had a few good of our partnerships as well yeah. yeah not these days i think but uh what no definitely not these days yeah. Yeah. wow all right great man it was great talking to you um for 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 people that want to um keep learning and growing from you how can they uh like follow you yeah so i i mainly i don't really post too much youtube related stuff on instagram but whenever i do it will be there so at paddy galloway just p-a-d-d-y G A L L O W A Y on Instagram and then on YouTube, just Paddy Galloway has a YouTube channel. You can see everything I'm doing there. So there'll be loads more videos over the summer. Great. Love it. All right, man. Thanks a lot. And uh, hey, great, great to be on. Thanks for inviting me on. No, thank you. This is lockdown. I've been experimenting and this is just the third episode. So just like I, I wasn't sure what's going to happen today, um, nor am I sure what happened in the last few episodes. So this is just like a a real good learning for me too just learning yeah, me too on. actually because i'm i'm not i actually realized i went on a podcast recently in dublin like a yeah. it's a what's it flow state podcast if everyone and anyone wants to look it up uh, with 
Ben Forsyth, who's this podcaster from Dublin. And I kind of just realized I was okay on the podcast, but I kind of realized that it's one section of like my kind of presentation I need to work on. So like even even today, like I'm not nervous. <laughs> I just feel like I often talk as if I'm just talking to the person and forget people are listening. So yeah. like I can, you know, I sometimes like don't fill in the blanks very well. I just assume someone knows enough about me or, you know, so it's, it's definitely a learning experience for me as well. So I appreciate the opportunity. <laughs> I'm just trying to make this like a natural conversation, man, because, um, yeah. yeah, like, like, uh, yeah, I'm no, I'm no podcast host or anything. I'm just like, just want to learn and grow and hopefully others are learning and growing too. That's it. That's it. <laughs> yeah. hundred percent. All right, man. Talk okay. Soon. Good luck. See you later.